as I was watching the show Vikings on Hulu, um, which is it's supposed to be historical, but it's actually like kind of piecing together folklore about this guy Ragnar Ragnar um, Loth, Lothbrok. Um, my people were kind of telling me the true story behind it, and they're like, "Well, um, his brother never turned on him, uh, Rollo." And uh, um, I, I guess, and then I looked it up, and apparently Rollo was based on another person that um, became a Christian who was a Viking. And um, they're like, "Well, this part's not true, and this part's not true." And the the first siege of Paris, they said, was super easy. Um, and in the show, it's like it was like crazy brutal, but Apparently it was very easy and um, then I made the decision to go back because I'm, I'm Ragnar, obviously. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good general. I mean, I, I, I think historically I was because I'm, I'm a little too brave. Um, that's, that's why it's, it was pretty easy to convince me that I'm George Monk. I'm a clone of George Monk. And, and when I talk about I'm Ragnar, it's not me, it's a twin of me. It's someone that has the same genetics as me. And so when they talk about Ragnar in my head, they're, t they're saying, he, this, and what, and he, he, so basically, he, Ragnar, wrote about what actually happened after the fact. And um, what happened is during the second siege of Paris, um, he way, way, way overestimated himself. And he didn't realize that there were going to be that many people waiting for him when he got to Paris and that they would have that good of defenses. And so many of his people died that um, he never really got over it. And um, I guess um, on, I guess his people weren't even mad at him about it because they they really liked him and they, they uh, appreciated him so much. But he was the one that um, never got over how many people died. During the second, during the second attempt to siege Paris, and so he never came back after that. Um, that was the last time he ever went after Paris. He kind of had this philosophy: um, you can ransack anywhere you want, and you can like attack monasteries, and you can attack cities anywhere um, as long as you don't attack Rome, because the Holy Roman Empire, because they, because there were so many. Uh, pilgrims there and so his philosophy is if, if people don't care about their city as much like Paris is they don't love Paris as much as they love the Vatican because the Vatican's a holy place then you don't have to worry about them defending it as much um, which I guess that could be a true story today I mean if you invade Saudi Arabia then um, that's a different level of defense because people love Saudi Arabia so much because it's a holy land. Anytime you invade the holy land, people will fight to the death for it. But if you invade somewhere like Paris, they run. Um, so he tried to attack Paris a second time and um, he, he I, I guess he, they were successful, but um, like they were successful getting paid out, but then um, he never forgave himself for how many people died, and um, but he this this whole story about him running away and I don't I don't really know where that came from. I'm not sure if I even know the story. I mean, I, all I know is what my people told me. I mean, I, I don't really know how well documented it is. I feel like we keep pretty good records of what actually happened historically versus what happens in the folklore. The folklore is generally written by your enemies a lot of the time. I realize I sound silly when I talk about folklore and stuff like that, but you have to understand, we have massive treasure stashes. Like I know where they are located or where at least three of them are located in the United States. And we have those treasure stashes because we ransack places and stole their gold. And that's why it's so easy to convince me that I was Ragnar Lothbrok, Lothbrok because uh, we went out and we took massive amounts of gold from these monasteries because the monasteries were easy to attack. Um, and it was pretty easy to attack Paris too because we knew all the secrets about Paris. And so um, no one saw us coming. Um, it was definitely not like everyone thinks it thinks it was uh, because they think that the Vikings were just primitive people. But we were scary. That was our philosophy is um, make sure you're plenty tattooed up and make sure that your hair is scary and make sure you're intimidating. and. Um, people will run away instead of fighting you. It's a pretty good philosophy. But um, 
Shangri-La exists, or El Dorado, the, the lost city of gold exists. Um, it's in the United States, and everyone used to think it was in South America. That's why the Spanish always went looking for El Dorado in South America. But it is in the United States, and it's very difficult to find. So um, the reason it exists is because we took all that Egyptian gold and all that Chinese gold and all that um, Roman gold and uh, we and all that Israeli gold in, in Jerusalem, and we, we put it somewhere. And hopefully someday I'm going to take that gold, and I'm going to put a lot of it in the Dome of the Rock, and then we're going to have a throne bed there, and it's going to be fun. But I don't know. I've always looked forward to conquering Jerusalem because everyone thinks that's impossible without Jesus. But guess what? Don't care. We're going to conquer it.